So this is a metal pipe from which I have to cut out 4 equal squares. After that, I have to cut them all into V shapes. But as the motor is curved and the plate being straight, the contact is minimum. Therefore, the V shapes need to be curved, for which I am going to use my new trick, which involves a vise and two bolts. Simply place the piece in between the two bolts and compress it with your vise to get a curved shape. So as you can see now, it fits pretty good. But this piece still needs a backbone. Therefore, I now have to cut out two of the V-shapes. So after completing the welding part, the motors are secured from all the sides. Now let's perform some cleaning for the welding areas and proceed further. Finally, this is a steel cover from an electrolytic capacitor which I'm going to use here to cover up the coupling area. So now that the upgrade is complete, it is time to move back to the topic regenerative braking. I'm going through all these efforts like adding the side supports and uh, adding a protective care to the coupling section because of the inertia of rest and inertia of motion. Now for those of you who do not know, here is a small demo. Inertia of rest, the body continues to maintain its state of rest even after an applied external force. Inertia of motion. The body continues to be in the state of motion even after applying an external stopping force. So, as I've shown you in many of my previous videos that most of the electric motors are also electric generators and for any motor to possess the regenerative braking feature, it has to be a generator. And this goes specially for the permanent magnet ones and this is a permanent magnet motor. So let's test its generating capability first. So here I have the multimeter that I've connected to the overall output of my motor. So let's wound the thread and test how much voltage it is generating. So as you can see that with the rope rotation testing, the maximum voltage reach is 27 volts DC. Now let's connect some actual load to it. So here I've connected this 12 volts car headlamp bulb. Let's turn off the lights and begin the test. Okay, go! So as you can see, it is generating electricity. So here I have this 250 volts, 10,000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and I have three of these. So let's connect them in parallel to make a small high voltage battery for demonstrating the regenerative braking.
Whoa, it is still charged. Oh, that's why it is always advised to discharge the capacitors before working on them, okay? Yeah, this one was charged, I guess. I can't believe that these are electrolytic capacitors and were still charged. Maybe their capacitance is too high. Although the spark was uh, very small, which means that the voltage was very low. So our battery pack is fully complete. This is overall negative and this is positive. Now, this is my DC motor speed controller that I made in my previous video, link for which will be provided in the description. You can check it out. Now, the controller has already been connected to this motor to demonstrate the regenerative braking. Now, imagine that there is this big car running at a very high speed on an empty road. And then suddenly there is this sheep that comes in front of it. Now, the driver has to push the brakes to stop the car. So, every atom that is somehow connected to the car is going to get charged to the level of kinetic energy proportional to the speed at which the car was running. Now, in that case, when the brakes are pushed, so the more the push for the brakes and the stopping of the car is, the higher is the amount of instantaneous energy released to the environment in the form of heat, sound, etc. So two cases arise. First, if the car was being run by an internal combustion engine and the second one, if it was being run by an electrical engine like this one. So if it was internal combustion engine, then regenerative braking is no longer possible at the moment. But if it was an electrical engine, then it is possible. And assume that this was the engine that was driving the car. So here I've added connectors to three devices. First, the speed controller, the motor itself, and the 100 watts car headlamp bulb. So let's connect the motor to the controller and start turning it on. There is this great news guys, I have this new website www.electrondeals.com You can see there are so many countries listed for products to buy from Amazon and if not then there is Banggood Worldwide Here you can see similar products are going to be listed in two pages just like the other countries and if we click on the buy on Amazon link you are going to be redirected directly to that page of the product from where you can buy you don't have to go and search for the products Link will be provided in the description you can check it out So coming back to the video now let's disconnect and connect the bulb quickly let's turn off the lights now okay so turning it on This bulb got fused. Too much voltage. So finally this 250 volts capacitor battery pack. Here I have connected these two diodes in series with the capacitor to prevent the backflow of charge. Seems like the capacitors have been charged. Let's check their charge voltage. So here we have 35 volts DC. So that's the energy that has been saved after applying the brakes. Now let's increase the charge further. It is charging right now. Let's measure the voltage again. And we have 63 volts DC. So the demonstration is complete. Let's short them up. Yeah. 
one more thing when we connect the load the motor slows down but when we short the wires directly for maximum loading it stops instantaneously like this see again instant stop maximum loading that's why it is regenerative braking so that's all for this video hope to see you in the next one till then bye bye